Hi viewers, Alan here again, back in the workshop. Continuing on with this uh, project to uh, be able to cut these uh, sorts of uh, grooves in, uh, in this ring. Um, I had some, some success with using a single tooth cutter. Unfortunately I <laughs> woke up to the fact that I couldn't use that for the real job because I didn't have access to do it. Which means I have to um, sharpen a cutter like this. In fact, this one. <laughs> um, so you're looking at the finished product here, actually. I have sharpened it, and uh, it created the uh, the second groove here, which you can see, um, perhaps. Worked out quite well. Cutter itself, though, maybe not so much. <laughs> it's the first time I've tried to do um, sharpening of something like this. Um, and there were some learning outcomes, shall we say, and uh, the end result was mm, pretty ordinary, although it did successfully cut the groove, so I shouldn't uh, run it uh, down too much. I think it will actually get the job done for me. Anyway, um, follow along as I bumble my way through how to set up a tool and cutter grinder to sharpen, well actually not just sharpen, it's a reshape or a change the profile of the teeth. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so this is going to be the first time that I've done a multi-tooth uh, milling cutter on this uh, tool and cutter grinder. So um, I'm finding my way. Uh, so the first thing was to um, get the dividing head uh, lined up horizontally, as you can see here. And also uh, vertically, as you see here. So for this process I'm using the alignment bar that I, I got for my uh, making sure my lathe tail stop was correctly aligned. So it's a, a ground parallel bar with a Morse 2 taper. Yeah, apologies for the rain, um, but it's been a wild and wet weekend. Um, if I uh, stop every time it rained I'd never get anything done. So anyway, I've um, now got the axis of this uh, dividing head um, set horizontally and vertically so it's correctly aligned this way and that way. Uh, now I've put in a, an ER40 um, collet chuck to hold the arbor that I want to mount the um, cutter on. It'd be nice if I had a more a full Morse taper arbor to put directly in here but I don't. That might be a future project to make one because I'm not happy with the accuracy of this uh, ER40, I'll just rotate him around and you can see perhaps we've got uh, about a thousandth run out on that thousandth of an inch which isn't a lot for general machining but it's not what you want when you're trying to sharpen a, a cutter anyway it's the best I can do so that's what we're going to go with we'll see how that thousandth works because it's just going to the uh, the run out is going to get worse the further away we get so uh, a thousandth there it's tested over there so that's about as good as it's going to get so let's nip it up at that and it might just have to be what we go with like it or not Use my little spanner again. She's uh, quite a big beast, this one. <laughs> it's the only spanner I've got, though, only open ended spanner I've got, which will open wide enough to uh, grab hold of the back end of this chuck. Anyway, let's see what we've got. Yeah. Pretty much exactly two thousandths run out there. Not happy, but what can I do? But it looks like I do need to make my own uh, arbor up here. Okay, so I've got the uh, cutter set up as well as I can do it. Um, which isn't very good with the run out, but anyway, it's what we've got. So I'm using this guy to set the first tooth at centre height. That was just um, a reading taken off the, um, the point on the tail stop. So, 
bit of an approximation. But again, as good as I can easily do it. So we'll get that back out of the way. And we can um, do subsequent teeth like that. So I'm going to go and touch off, then move this back over this way, go in 20 feet across, and see how that works out. That's touched. So now we're going to go in 20. And we'll see how much that takes off. Have a look at that tooth. Let's mark it so I can find it. So that's the one I've just touched. Let's bring that one around and inspect it. Then we'll just lift this up for a moment. And let's take you back clear of that. All right. So that's the first tooth, so I'll measure how wide that land is and decide where to go from there. So this is necessarily going to be an approximate, but it looks like that's about 1.5 millimetres. We've certainly got a ways to go here. So I went at 20 thou. Let's go again at 30 thou. So I've got to put the tooth back. So, and we're going to go at 30, so we're going another 10. Let's see what that gives us. We've still got a ways to go yet. Let me take another 20. Let's take that up to 60. Let's see what that gives us. Oh, put the tooth back now. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this, but I don't know what it is.
it's getting getting a bit closer now. Another ten. Another 10 might well be what we want. So we might do them all at that and then come back afterwards. Uh, that's done them all at um, 10 degrees and I was going to come along now and do a small land um, at uh, perhaps 4 degrees just to um, create the actual cutting edge. Okay, well I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but I've got to confess to another mistake. So looking up under here, I had this finger uh, indexing on the top of the preceding tooth. Uh, which unfortunately of course was the wrong thing to do because as we, we came around eventually it came to a tooth which had been truncated a bit to make the flat which meant that the indexing position on the, on the contact point over here was a bit different. Now I, as I've fooled around with the feeler gauge I can't actually detect or measure the difference that it made but I've um, reset things so that now the this finger is stopped against this screw with a lock nut so it its position and therefore its um, contact point on the the tooth that we're indexing against will not be affected by how much material is removed from the the teeth coming around which is what i should have done in the first place so lesson learned there you make sure the indexing finger uh, isn't affected by what you're doing with the teeth Okay, so I've finished doing the, uh, the clearance angle on the back of the teeth, that's it was done at 10 degrees. And um, now I want to do the, the cutting edge, which I'm doing at 5 degrees. And I just want to have a, a very narrow land of the 5 degrees just to create the cutting edge. Now I've changed over to a, a finer grip wheel. 
and we're going to be taking <laughs> very light cuts here hopefully um, it's all an experiment now because I've never done any of this before now let's give it a go and see what happens yes so I had to reset this wheel to uh, 5 degrees tilt to change the tilt which upset everything else and blah 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 we're doing things in thousandths of an inch here now so I've moved the uh, Move the cutter in a thousandth of an inch. I'm not sure whether that cut or it didn't, so I'll better have a quick squeeze. Yes, it did in fact make a very light, exactly what I was looking for. I'll take a photo later so you can see it, but it, it did exactly what I wanted. A very fine cut. Yeah, so on, on to the next one now then. Yeah, it's been all the way around. Sharpening's uh, somewhat uneven though, perhaps to be expected. Some of that is possibly due to the way it had been previously reground with um, on the side angles here. I mean, uh, you can probably see that you see this uh, grinds here. I don't know what this wheel started out in life as, but it was reground once before to be the 30 degrees, and that's where all this patterning around here came from. So I don't know how accurately that was done. I certainly don't overrate the accuracy of what I've done, but uh, most of the teeth have got a fairly clear um, cutting edge, although it's not uh, terribly even. But let's face it, my single tooth cutter managed to do something, so presumably this can do something as well. Um, I'm not machining parts for the Mars Rover. Uh, I'm inclined to um, give this wheel a try in its current state. I think that's what we'll do. Oh, well, I haven't got a lot to lose. If it doesn't work, I'll just have another go. Okay. So we give it a try with a three millimeter deep depth of cut. See how that works out. Hideously out of round. like it successfully finished the cut anyway. Uh, let's, let's have a look at what it's uh, achieved. Worked out quite well. Cutter itself though, maybe not so much. So now I can uh, use the cutter to uh, put all the grooves around this ring and finish making this piece for my dividing head. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing or liking. Um, takes quite a bit of effort to make these videos actually. So uh, anything uh, that gives me a bit of feedback that says it was worth the effort is much appreciated. So again, thanks very much and see you in the next one.